Amen? But the Lord is faithful. Let's turn to uh, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 3. Look at this great scripture. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. You might ought to uh, circle that in your Bible and go back to it time and time again. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you. God is establishing us right now. We are building up our most holy faith. And we are uh, growing and we are progressing in our faith. So the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. I'm a living proof that God is a keeper. And uh, over 40 years as uh, experience as a Christian, in fact, uh, 42 years as a believer, the Lord has kept me down through the uh, the years gone by, and that gives me confidence to know that the Lord is going to keep me from evil and protect me and preserve my soul until Jesus returns. I'm telling you, I'm a man of faith, and I believe God is God, and He always will be. Amen? Someone might say, uh, my family is in trouble. What is your response, Pastor? But the Lord is faithful. Somebody might say, my business is in crisis. What is your response, Pastor? But the Lord is faithful. Someone might say, my health is failing. What is your response, Pastor? I'm here to tell you, but the Lord is faithful. Let's give Him a clap offering, a praise. Make a little noise in the house of God this morning. Now, to verify this, let's turn in our Bibles back to the book of Psalms, chapter 37, and start at verse 1. I want to share with you some fantastic Bible reading today that will be encouraging to you. First of all, it says, fret not thyself. Have you ever had an experience that you're just fretting over nothing? Well, I've had many of an episode like that. And I'm reminded today, the Bible says, fret not thyself because of anything, especially because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. So oftentimes, the devil puts in our mind, look how the wicked is faring and how you're barely just getting by. Well, he's a, first of all, the devil's a liar. We're getting by just fine. I wouldn't want to trade places with none of those guys. I know my identity and I know my relationship with Jesus Christ. So the Bible says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Verse 2, For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Remember that. Don't allow yourself to get your vision in the wrong direction. This is what happens to the wicked. The Bible said they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. The powerful wicked men down through centuries gone by, they've all come and gone and perished and died. Let me tell you something. They didn't live forever. No, their terror and their reign come to an end. And so the Bible says, listen here, they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. So the Bible said in verse 3, trust in the Lord. Let's say it, trust in the Lord. That's our obligation. Trust in the Lord and do good, and so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Our obligation now is to trust in the Lord. Why? Because the Lord is faithful. But the Lord is faithful. Let's trust in the faithful God and do good. And so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. All of your needs taken care of. Listen to verse 4, one of my favorites in the Bible. You might want to circle that in your Bible today. 
It says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and He shall give thee the desires of thine heart. I think about what God is doing in the life of Souls Harbor Church. A few years back, when we was housed down on 4th Street, God put it in my heart for a desire for a new building. And I'm here to tell you that this scripture does not fail, and it does not lie. It says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and He shall give thee desires of thine heart. Think about what a beautiful place God has given us here at Souls Harbor on Boggs Road to worship the living God. God has also put in my heart a desire to build again. And God has helped us to purchase 55 acres just about five miles from this location to build again on. I'm telling you, I have delighted in the Lord ever since I was a 16-year-old boy And throughout my life, I've seen it time and time again, God has given me the desire of my heart. I'll tell you one thing, God has helped my heart to be right with God. I didn't desire a bunch of junk and corruption, but I desired the things that pleases God. And, and, And the Bible teaches us if we delight Ourself, other words, enjoy Jesus, enjoy our salvation, enjoy going to church, enjoy living for God. If we delight ourselves in the Lord, He shall give us the desires of our heart. Wow. God's given me a good family, good sons, daughter in law, granddaughters. I'm a blessed man. God has given me the desires of of my heart. Seemed like God has just opened the windows of heaven and just poured out His his blessings on my life. And I know He is you as well. So we've got a right to rejoice. We've got a right to worship God and praise Him for His bountiful, rich blessings in our lives. If things not going so well with you today, are you delighting yourself in the Lord? Are you fretting because of evildoers? Do you have your vision out of focus? I'd like for you to focus your eyes on the the cross on Calvary and on Jesus and begin to delight yourself in being a Christian and delight yourself in serving the Lord and then He shall give you the desires of your heart. I'm living proof of this scripture that God is doing that in my life. In my ministry, in my family, I think I'm one of the most blessed men on planet earth today. I'm a blessed man. I enjoy my relationship with God. Hallelujah. The scripture is real in my life and it wants to be real in your life as well. So delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. What is your heart desiring today? Recently, we had a men's ministry meeting at the new property, and, and we've got a big wooden cross erected and set up there. And that night, dear men's ministry, we took a prayer request and pinned it to the cross. And then we collected them all. Brother Jimmy is keeping them in safe keeping. And then as the Lord answers them, we're going to read them and tell them what the Lord has done. And I'll tell you mine a little bit later as it comes to pass. But God is a dream fulfiller. He's a a vision fulfiller. If you can ask it, you can dream it, my God can do it. Look at verse 5. This is an important word. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in Him. And he shall bring it to pass. But the Lord is faithful. Commit thy way into him. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light. And thy judgment as the noonday. 
Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way, because the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil, for evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord shall inherit the earth. Jesus again reaffirmed that. He said, the meek shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt, not, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bit their bow to cast down the poor and the needy and to slay such as of be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter to their own heart and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath, hath is better than the riches of many wicked. I'll tell you, my friend, if I can somehow get a good pan of cornbread and a good glass of milk, I've got me a feast. I'm telling you, I'm enjoying this scripture right here. A little, yes, uh, a little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. I'm blessed. I'm amazed at the simple things of life. I enjoy God's blessings. I was out there on the porch this morning, and I saw an absolutely a beautiful day. I mean, it's perfect weather out there. Oh, enjoy the day. This is a day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Wow. God is good. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. In the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke, and they shall consume away. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. Verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Many of the time, I have happened at a certain place at the right time, in the right position, to have a right word for somebody in need. And then I know that God is ordering my steps. But the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Are you allowing God to order your steps? Are you letting God be in charge of your life? Wow. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not utterly be cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Thank God. I have been young, and now I am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed or children begging bread. God takes care of his own. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart, and none of his steps shall slide. We don't have to slide backwards because we don't have time for that. We're busy going forward. Amen. The wicked watcheth the righteous, 
and seeketh to slay him. And the Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way. He shall exalt thee to inherit the land when the wicked are cut off, and thou shalt see it. I'm planning on being around for the end time finale. Amen. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Look at verse 37, but the Lord is faithful. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. And He is their strength in the time of trouble. But my God is faithful. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in Him. Mark that entire chapter in your Bible and go back to it often when you think about how faithful God is. Amen. Ask them to come back to the music this morning. We're going to prepare for altar prayer today. I want to pray for each one of you that God would just bless you and strengthen you. And may you ever trust in the faithful Lord. But the Lord is 